there have been over a dozen retrospective studies of children with FAS. Overall, these studies, such as the Seattle studies or studies out of Germany, reported an overall mean IQ of 72.26. The data presented here were collected in San Diego, California as part of a project at the Center for Behavioral Teratology. The mean IQ performances of children with FAS were compared to alcohol-exposed children with few if any features of FAS. All children in this study were exposed prenatally to high amounts of alcohol, however only the FAS group displayed the craniofacial anomalies and growth deficits associated with the diagnosis. The other group was designated as having prenatal exposure to alcohol, that is, PEA and had documented exposure to high levels of alcohol but were not dysmorphic, microcephalic, or growth retarded. In comparison to normal controls, both groups of alcohol-exposed children displayed significant deficits in overall IQ measures as well as deficits on most of the subtest scores. While the PEA subjects usually obtained marginally higher IQ scores than those with FAS, Few significant differences were found between the two alcohol-exposed groups. These results indicate that high levels of prenatal alcohol exposure are related to an increased risk for deficits in intellectual functioning and that these deficits can occur in children without all of the physical features required for a diagnosis of FAS. Our PEA subjects may be somewhat similar to individuals identified by other groups as having FAE. However individuals with PEA display few if any of the facial features of FAS, and are not growth retarded or microcephalic. This was a study of a broad range of neuropsychological tests, such as, the Wide Range Achievement Test, which assesses academic skills, the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test and the Boston Naming Test, both assessment of basic language functioning, the California Verbal Learning Test, a list learning and memory test, the visual motor integration test which measures basic visual perceptual skills, the Grude pegboard test, a test of fine motor speed and coordination, and the children's category test, a measure of nonverbal learning. Along the x-axis are the tests included in the battery. For comparison purposes, all scores were converted to standard scores with a mean of 100 and an SD of 15. Children with FAS or PEA showed deficits in comparison to controls and they were very similar to each other. There does seem to be some indication that the nonverbal measures, which is on the right of the slide, are not as impaired as the verbal and academic measures, which are on the left and center of the slide. The take-home message is that children with FAS and those exposed to high amounts of alcohol, but without the characteristics required for a diagnosis of FAS, are similarly impaired. The FAS children tend to be a bit worse than the PEA children, but the pattern of behavioral deficits is fairly similar over a wide range of tests. In addition to the abilities already discussed, a few studies have documented other specific neuropsychological deficits in individuals with FAS. Children with prenatal alcohol exposure, with and without FAS, have demonstrated various deficits on measures of executive functioning. These measures have revealed problems in areas such as planning, tower task shown above, cognitive flexibility, trails test, inhibition, stroop test, and concept formation and reasoning, word context tests. Generally, performance on these measures is characterized by increased errors and more difficulty adhering to rules. Therefore, children are less successful overall. For example, on the Tower measure shown above, Tower of California, similar to Tower of London, children with FAS and PEA passed fewer items overall and made more rule violations than controls. The only two rules were to never place a larger piece on top of a smaller one and to move only one piece at a time. As can be seen the alcohol exposed children had many more rule violations. In addition, Deficits have been found on the WCST, Wisconsin Card Sort Test, a nonverbal measure of problem solving. The WCST test requires both problem solving and cognitive flexibility and has been proposed to be sensitive to frontal system dysfunction. This test is a gold standard in the measure of executive functioning in neuropsychology. 
children with prenatal exposure to alcohol made more errors and had more difficulty with the conceptual nature of the task than controls. New data indicate that they have trouble identifying and defining concepts. Finally, tests of planning ability are also thought to be sensitive to frontal systems dysfunction although few such studies have been done in individuals with FAS. On the progressive planning test which is similar to the Tower of London test children with FAS or FAE had difficulty with planning ahead and tended to perseverate on incorrect strategies. So far the results could be summarized as 1. Heavy prenatal alcohol exposure is associated with a wide range of neurobehavioral deficits including visuospatial functioning, verbal and nonverbal learning, and executive functioning. 2. Heavy prenatal alcohol exposure causes microcephaly and disproportionate reductions in the corpus callosum, basal ganglia, and cerebellum. 3. Children with and without physical features of the fetal alcohol syndrome display qualitatively similar deficits. Secondary disabilities are those disabilities that the individual is not born with, and hopefully with appropriate intervention could be ameliorated. This slide illustrates the extent of these secondary disabilities as a function of age. These are individuals with FAS and FAE. As can be seen over 90% of these individuals have mental health problems and about 50% of those over the age of 12 have disrupted school experiences, trouble with the law, which is frequently severe enough to require confinement. They also engage in relatively high rates of inappropriate sexual behavior and a significant number have alcohol and drug abuse problems. Interestingly, the factors that are protective against these secondary disabilities are being raised in a stable, nurturing home, diagnosis before the age of six, no sexual or physical abuse, not changing households every few years, not living in a poor quality home, and receiving developmental disability services. Much of what we know about FAS and the effects of prenatal alcohol exposure is the result of work on animal models. After FAS was identified it became important to demonstrate that the effects were indeed the result of alcohol exposure and not due to factors such as other drugs, maternal conditions, or nutritional variables. The development of appropriate animal models was very important in this regard. Models were developed for assessing physical features of FAS as well as the behavioral, neuroanatomical, and neurochemical profiles of prenatal alcohol exposure. The ideal test animal would absorb, metabolize and eliminate alcohol similar to human, transport alcohol and metabolites across placenta similar to human, have embryos and fetuses with developmental and metabolic patterns similar to that of human be easily bred with large litters and a short gestation length, be inexpensive to maintain under laboratory conditions, and importantly not bite, scratch, kick, howl or squeal. No one animal meets all these requirements and the vast amount of work has been done in rodents, for example, rats and mice. However, models have been developed in primates, sheep, pigs, and dogs. There is a continued need for animal research to answer questions that simply cannot be answered in humans, including the identification of risk factors, the elucidations of mechanisms by which alcohol damages the brain, and brain-behavior relationships. One can also mention the important reasons for conducting animal research and why it is done. Besides the ones listed on this slide the following factors could also be mentioned. We can assess mechanisms to help us understanding how alcohol does damage which might lead to ways to prevent or remediate this damage. We can also study genetic factors with the large number of selected lines or strains that are available. We can examine physiological outcomes not readily available for study in humans, for example, anatomical or neurochemical changes. Finally, since the availability of FAS subjects for research is limited, these animal studies can act as a guide for studies on humans. This slide shows areas where similar findings have been found both with the animal models and with humans. The point is that the models appear to be valid for studying FAS. In fact, the amount of concordance between the animal models and the human condition is rather remarkable. One model developed by Kathy Sulik uses mice. 
by exposing pregnant mice to high doses of alcohol during brief periods of gestation, she has been able to produce a mouse with the facial features of FAS. On the left is the control animal and the right the alcohol exposed animal. Note the small eye openings, which are called palpable fissures, and the long flat area under the nose, philtrum. Utilizing this model, Sulik and colleagues have been able to demonstrate that neural crest cells are especially sensitive to the effects of embryonic alcohol exposure and that the death of these cells may be responsible for the cranial facial defects in FAS. Pre and or early alcohol exposure can cause gross reduction in brain size. Alcohol can alter a number of brain regions, including the cortex, hippocampus, and corpus callosum. The cerebellum is one area that is particularly vulnerable to prenatal alcohol. On the left we see a sagittal view through the vermis of the cerebellum for a control rat and a rat exposed to alcohol during the third trimester equivalent brain growth spurt. Alcohol treatment during the brain growth spurt significantly reduces granule cell number and per kind cell number in the cerebellum. In the panel on the right, on the top you can see the monolayer of per kind cells in a control subject. On the bottom is an animal exposed to early alcohol treatment, which significantly reduced the number of per kind cells. It is interesting that the cerebellar vermis, particularly lobules 1 to 5 have been shown to be reduced in area in children exposed to large amounts of alcohol prenatally.